OK. So first thing is we realize that this equation is not in standard form, correct? Right? Not in standard form. So the first thing we want to do, guys, is set this equal to 1. So I'm going to divide by 12. When I divide a 12 in both sides, I get x squared over 4 minus y squared over 3 equals 1. Now immediately, just like we did with, just like we did with an ellipse, we want to find, identify the center and a and b. Well, the center is rather simple. Well, what do I have over here? The center is going to be at 0, comma 0. A squared is equal to 4, because remember now, in this case, 4 a squared is bigger than b squared, but that's not always going to be the case. But we can say that a squared is equal to 4, and b squared is equal to 3. So a is equal to 2, b is equal to square root of 3. And then if I wanted to find c squared, remember guys, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 4 plus 3 is 7 equals c squared. So therefore, c equals the square root of 7, which is 2.6457513. But we'll just leave it as the square root of 7. Um, so anyways, boom, quick. Got a lot of that information. Yes, is everybody OK, semi OK with that? All right, so now if we wanted to sketch the graph, um, we can sketch the center as at 0, 0. There's the center. My a, my a squared is under my x. So that means I have a horizontal transverse axis. And the distance of my vertices is 2, just like an ellipse. So I'm going to go 2 to the left, 2 to the right. Vertice, vertice. Um, my uh, foci is going to be square root of 7. And again, guys, just you know, estimate the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 7 is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. What does that Makes sense for like a rough estimate. So here's 2, so therefore that would be 3. So let's just call the foci there. And again, guys, just like parabolas and you know, the, the parabola, you know, the hyperbolas are always open up towards your focus. Now before I go ahead and sketch my focus, though, I'm going to sketch the vertices. And I'm going to give you guys a little tip or, for asymptotes. So another question that we could ask for this is identify the asymptotes. Now this is a horizontal transverse axis. So based on your notes, the equation for the asymptote is opposite of b over a times x minus h plus k. Well, guys, do I already have b over a? Huh? Do I already have b over a? Yeah, I already have b. Um, I already have b, which is square root of 3. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 times x. Right, because h and k are both 0. Does anybody know how to graph that? Ugh. That doesn't look that fun, does it? So don't worry. There's a little bit of a trick we can use. Because first of all, you guys should know this is direct variation. I mean, this is going to be a line. Um, but here's a kind of a trick. If we find the covertices, now again, what is the covertices? The square root of 7, that's roughly going to be between um, Oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at b. b is going to be the square root of 3, which is somewhere in between 2 and 1, right? So if I just wanted to sketch this, this is just a little hack for you guys. There's the two covertices. The covertices are not on there. But sometimes the covertices are nice, because where's my blue? Because what we can do is if we created a box with the um, covertices and the vertices, Oh, you got to be kidding me. All right. If we create a nice little box, what we can now do is if we go from corner to corner, from corner to corner, we can now actually draw the asymptote. Because this is not easy. Sometimes, guys, like if this was 3 halves, then it'd be easy to graph. Up 3 over 2, right? Go back to Algebra 1 class, right? I mean, if it's easy to graph, you just graph it. But square root of 3 over 2 is probably not as simple. So what you can do is plot the covertices, make a nice little box, and then that's your equation of your asymptotes. Now, are you guys going to have to graph the asymptotes on a test? No. It's, I mean, more likely than not. You, you might be asked to at least identify what the equation is. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys a way to graph them, just so you know. 
So now, the reason why I like putting the asymptotes there first is because, remember, the graph approaches the asymptotes. And look how pretty that is. Right? Thank you. I'm not a good drawer, but man, looks really pretty hyperbola. It's prettier than that one. See, this one, I drew the, I drew the hyperbolas first before putting the asymptotes. So it doesn't look that pretty. Here, I put the asymptotes first, and look how good that is. Right? You guys don't give me any. 